Hi everyone, I'm Jessica James Stetsman and welcome back to the Mill Creek Government Channel. The show we have prepared for you today will not only warm your heart, but also children in need. Project Linus is a nonprofit organization that creates and gathers security blankets for children experiencing illnesses, trauma, and hardship. Joining us today to share this organization's powerful message is the Northwest PA Project Linus Coordinator, Joanne Burkhart. Joanne, thank you so much for joining us today in the studio. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me today. I appreciate the invite and the invitation. Wonderful. Well, when I hear Project Linus, the first thing I think of um, is the lovable character from Charlie Brown, Linus, and he yes. carries around his little blankie, um, you know, like I said, as a security blanket or um, as a source of comfort. So why don't you tell us the true origin of Project Linus and um, give us any specifics you have on, on how the organization itself got started? Well, back in uh, 95, 1995, a woman by the name of Karen Locke was reading a parade magazine, the Sunday Parade magazine. And she saw an article about a young girl, a three-year-old girl who was going through cancer treatment and who was carrying a blanket around with her throughout her treatment. And the comfort that the mother said that the little girl was getting from that. And she thought, well, I crochet and I can do something like this. And Karen lived in Denver at the time. And as the story goes, Project Linus was created. Mm -hmm. And we now have nearly 400 local chapters. That's and incredible. sometimes it's just something that simple mm -hmm. uh, that makes other things happen. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's really funny that you mentioned the story in Parade because I think there's so many times in the national news where you read a story that just really touches your heart and you somehow feel connected to it from the very start. And right. this is one of those cases. Exactly. Um, the mission statement of Pro Project Linus is twofold. Yes. And so why don't you share with us um, this unique mission statement for the organization? Well, the first mission part of our mission statement is we provide blankets, to children in need, uh, going through a traumatic situation, uh, from birth to age 18. A lot of times people don't realize that we go up to age 18, they think it might just be for babies. I didn't know that you went to age 18, actually. I'm familiar with your organization, but I didn't know that either. Yes, so they think that we just make them for little, we only need little blankets. Uh, but sometimes we, we do go to age 18. Um, and so it's children in need, it could be in a hospital, a child that has been gone through uh, some type of a traumatic situation. Uh, so it could be someone that's going into some type of service uh, agency that we would provide them with a blanket. Mm -hmm. So that's where, that is the first and main part of our mission. The second part is a service, um, something that either uh, children in high school, they need a service project, or people just like to do a service to their community. And behind me here, we have our, what we call our Kids Helping Kids. We just completed uh, three days at Celebrate Erie, and we had almost 900 of these squares colored mm -hmm. at our booth. And then throughout the year, uh, we have women that will make them into quilts that we take to the pediatric units at St. Vincent and Hammett. So that is a service project. But we also, we can go into other things later, but um, so it's a service portion as well. So we are twofold. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. And you can see, I don't know what age group some of the kids are, but oh. you know, some are colored, you know, out of the lines. And mm -hmm. I mean, these are just the cutest little cartoons. Very colorful, mm -hmm. very bright. And we always tell them, you know, that uh, but like here, the lamb doesn't have to be just the color of a lamb. Right. They're very colorful and very cheery. Right. And I do, I see their name and actually age seven on this bottom corner right. here. Exactly. Great, great. And how many blankets have been distributed nationwide? I know it's a very large number. It is. It's been over six million blankets since 19. 95. That's incredible. Yes. That just means that so many people have been so generous and care yes. about, um, you know, making uh, children feel 
secure in whatever thing they're about to go through, whatever hardship they're going exactly. through that yes. helps them. So people mm -hmm. are very, very generous. Can you tell us, and, and you do run the local chapter, can you tell us what's the significance of having a local chapter? And you did just mention how many chapters there are nationally. Go ahead and yes. give that number again. There is about 400 chapters mm -hmm. nationally. Um, having our local chapter, um, we are able to, like when we deliver the blankets monthly to our the hospitals or to the different agencies, um, we are able to meet, we try to meet their needs. Uh, sometimes even if we've de delivered blankets to a certain place, there have been times, not very often, that maybe two weeks later we may get a call and say, we need more blankets. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the need is sometimes greater than what we have blankets for. Um, but I think that we're able to uh, fill that, look, that void for the children of what they're going through or in just a small way. Mm -hmm. It's not going to take away their the issues and the problems that they're going through. Mm -hmm. But we like to think that maybe we're helping them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I absolutely, I really do think that you are. Joanne, I know that being a part of this organization has great meaning to you. Can you tell me um, why did you want to become a part of the organization? How did you hear about it first? And then, you know, what made um, you become the local <laughs> chapter? Uh, I always liked to knit and crochet. That was my first uh, thing that I always did. I've done, I've learned to quilt since. But you can only make so many blankets for family members. And so um, I had gone online and first I called the hospitals and said, you know, do you need blankets? And, and, that, and then I went online and that's how I found Project Linus and I found our local chapter. Um, and then I became an assistant in our chapter and and how long ago was that uh 10 years oh okay wow so for 10 years i've been affiliated with nwpa project linus um i've been three years as the coordinator and that once the uh, coordinator had to re chose to retire due to family mm -hmm. uh responsibilities and, and necessity and so uh, but she trained me well mm -hmm. and i still call her for uh, with questions from time to time. Mm -hmm. And so I'm guessing this isn't your full-time job. You do this on the side. Uh, yes, I'm a retired grandma, <laughs> and that, but uh, it is nearly a full-time job as far as hours in the day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's true, you know, and I didn't think about that, but I've, um, I've actually helped make some blankets for your mm -hmm. organization, but making the blankets, even the ones that I did, and we'll show something similar, even the, making the blanket that I did, I mean, that took us one blanket, I would say at least three hours, mm -hmm. you know, but that was for me just a very simple blanket, you know, right. it's the kind that you cut and tie, sure. but when you're quilting or when you're crocheting or knitting, right. how many the, hours does that take? Well, it could take maybe eight to 10 hours mm -hmm. for the quilting, but now as the coordinator, there's other, other duties involved. Yes, yeah. in that, but I enjoy that as well. Good, And I've good. met a lot of wonderful, what we call blanketeers along the way. Mm -hmm and that so it's very nice well we're glad to have you as the the head of the local chapter now Thank so you. where um where does the organization meet and how often we have uh, monthly meetings um at yaples on west 26th street uh, there's also meetings at uh, yaples on east 38th street we have sew-ins um, at mill creek sewing kelly sewing corner um, and these are also drop-off locations mm -hmm. that someone can, because we don't, someone may not have time to come to the meetings or to our sew-ins, but they might want to still make blankets and they make them at their home mm -hmm. and they drop them off at those locations. Mm -hmm. And the meetings consist of, um, you know, I'm sure networking, mm -hmm. um, deciding maybe who's going to get the next blanket, but then also making the blankets. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yes. And how many people uh, come to your meetings each month? Um, it varies. It could be eight to 10. It could be two to three. Mm -hmm. uh, some of our meetings are in the afternoons or mornings. We don't generally have meetings in the evenings. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the women, they're um, retired for the mm -hmm. most part. Um, so they don't 
we don't have evening meetings. No evening meetings. Okay. No. Not a problem. But like you said, if somebody has more free time in the in the evening, they could make a blanket and then just drop it off if they can't meet during the day. That's correct. Good. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, what we do have some on the set here with us, and I think they're absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, I'm not very talented. <laughs> I haven't quilted in a very long time. But what kind of blankets? does the organization accept um, for the children? Are we, are you allowed to donate um, used blankets or can they, do they have to be new? No, that is, Project Linus does not have a lot of say rules, so to speak, but the ones that they do have, we have to strictly adhere to. Mm -hmm. They need to be new handmade blankets, uh, knitted, crocheted, fleece, or the quilted. Mm -hmm. um, we can't have them be um, of nothing of wool, or uh, with buttons or ribbons, and that's mm -hmm. mainly for children's safety and like right. allergies. Right. And that, so we have to keep those things in mind. Mm -hmm. And you have to think too, if a little baby is getting this blanket, you know, I know if you did have buttons or anything else on this, and you want to make sure the pins are removed. Correct. Um, you know, you wouldn't want them to accidentally pick at it or, mm -hmm. you know, digest it right. if they're a little kid. Or we don't have that they're a uh, real big open weave for their fingers to go through. So oh, sure. I mean, these are very, so I brought examples mm -hmm. of the type, I mean, knitted and crocheted. Uh, and, and let's see the top one here. Why don't you show me this one? And you did explain something to me, a few things that were important with this blanket. First, this is a fleece blanket, mm -hmm. but why don't you explain what's going on with the ends here? Because uh, this is gorgeous, and I know that I certainly didn't make something like this. <laughs> um, one of the things that you can also do with a fleece blanket is crochet around it. Um, there's a tool that will put a little hole, notch a hole mm -hmm. around the perimeter of it and then you can crochet around it and that's very popular uh, along with the fleece tie blankets. Mm -hmm. Then this fleece tie blanket um, for our viewers, this is something truly that anybody can make. I did this so I know that you can do it too. Um, and, and we'll show you, we'll zoom in on here on these images, but this is just a fleece blanket that you can get really at a lot of retail shops yes. and, um, and you just tie off the ends and, and, you know, some people tie them off or some people cut a little hole in here and pull and it, through. it through and that's yes. just so it doesn't fray when it, you know, goes into the washer or anything right. like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. This exactly. Is, this is beautiful, but this is something that everybody can make. This right. is a little they, bit easier on the, you know, beginner to advanced skill level. We have people that will tell us, well, I don't know how to sew, I don't know how to knit, but we'll say to them, but can you tie a knot? Mm -hmm. Can do you, do you know how to cut fabric and can you tie a knot? Cause that's, that's all this takes. But like I said, we made a blanket like this. Um, and you know, and it, it's, you almost don't realize how long it's going to take. So make sure you do set aside a few hours or, mm -hmm. you know, one hour every night for a few nights. But um, this is very easy. And like you said, you just cut the blanket at the ends and, and loop it through. Exactly. And then I want you to show me, we can move this one back over here. Um, I want you to show me the two that were um, crocheted and- mm -hmm. This is a crocheted this one. This is a crochet, okay. And so this is a different type of needle than would what would make that one, is that right? Right, right. this is okay. a crochet hook. This is just a hook. It may be about this long and have one little hook on the mm -hmm. end of it. And this is a half, cro half hook shell. I'm not exactly sure of the name of this one exactly. Um, but that one of our blanketeers has made. And, um, and you, as you can see, it's a nice closer mm -hmm. uh, yeah, stitch to it. So, the, you know, fingers are not going to be going through there. Right, right. And that. Yeah, so this is ideal mm -hmm. type this of This is a absolutely gorgeous. And the colors are beautiful. I mean, I know if I were a little kid, I would love this. Especially the pink. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> this is darling. And this one over here is knitted. Is that right? Yes, this is knitted. And again, it's it just, you know, not too mm -hmm. loose. But again, you know, be very snuggly. Yeah. And what if somebody doesn't know how to knit or crochet? Is that something that, you know, um, when your group meets that you can kind of show each other? Is that a hard skill to learn? Um, we don't necessarily teach mm -hmm. uh, someone how to knit or crochet or, um, I mean, other than tying the mm -hmm. fleece. Um, time does not really kind of allow us mm -hmm. to do that. Generally speaking, someone who does come to our meetings um, already they, has the knowledge behind them. Pretty much. We okay. may give them a pattern to mm -hmm. learn a, a different pattern, but not 
to learn a, how to how to do it. Correct. And it is. I mean, I have tried before, and this. I think is a dying skill because I know I'm sure, time. yeah, it's time consuming. Um, you know, you do have to pay attention to what you're doing, but, um, I, this is, you know, for me, it was, it was difficult to learn, but, um, the blankets are, they just turn out beautifully. I mean, I wish I, you know, understood it more on, you know, I just, mm -hmm. sometimes the concept is hard to grab cause you, you know, miss a, a stitch. Miss a link or a stitch, yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, and then with these, um, I also wanted to talk about where they're coming from. Um, do they need to come from a, a clean environment or? Yes, yes. We um, ask that the blankets come from, if a, if a person smokes or has pets in their home, we ask that the blankets be laundered. Mm -hmm. Again, because of children's allergies. Right. And right. that um, allergies and, or asthma, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, do because we just don't know where the blankets go, right? Um, as we were saying earlier, when we do drop off our blankets at a hospital or an agency due to HIPAA, we literally at times are opening, are pressing a buzzer, and a door opens and a bag of blankets go in. Mm -hmm. So we really don't see the children. Mm -hmm. So we don't know where they go mm -hmm. or who's getting them. It's to the discretion at the, of the agency or hospital. Um, we are occasionally told that um, the children really do like them mm -hmm. and that they do, um, they do good for the children. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't know because we don't actually have the opportunity to hand mm -hmm. the blanket to the children. Um, so, but we know that they need to go because you just never know what child may have a health issue. Right, right. Or if you know, like you said, if they are um, battling leukemia or some sort of you know childhood cancer, they may be more susceptible to you know sicknesses or germs mm -hmm. or things like that. So, um, so definitely a smoke-free environment or have it laundered. And then the same would go for um, an environment with a pet in it. We need yes. to make sure that you know if there's any um, animal dander, cat or dog sure. hair, that that's not coming right. with the blanket too. Exactly. Right. Okay. Yes. And our blankets are always, we always have very, very wonderful blankets that are donated to us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, sure, sure. And then um, we might have chatted about this a bit already, but all of these blankets are handmade. Yes. Can somebody go to the store and purchase a blanket? No. Mm -hmm. No. All right. That is one of the premises of Project Line is that they're new handmade blankets. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really touching and special because, and again, not that a store made blanket doesn't have, um, you know, that heartwarming feeling, but these really are all made with love, mm -hmm. you know, so the children get it and um, this is actually handmade and, you know, somebody's uh, blood, sweat and tears have gone into each blanket. Yes. And when they say it does take a village, that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. And if somebody does know how to crochet or to um, to knit, are there patterns available? You said you distribute some, or are yes. There and there's patterns? also on the Project Linus website there mm -hmm. is many p different patterns, uh, knitting and crocheting, um, that are available um, on their website mm -hmm. as well. Good, good. So people can check out the website. Yes. And what is that website? Uh, ProjectLinus.org. ProjectLinus.org. So easy. These these websites, it's cut and <laughs> yes. dry and you can't miss it. You can't no. mess it up and you just go to Google and type it in or in the subject line. Yes. Um, and what about the sizes? This one looks um, a little larger, but then some of them are smaller. Are there certain sizes? You mentioned crib size or some are, right. you know, for 18-year-olds. Um, what are the... Generally, our sizes, because we start at NICU, mm -hmm. and sometimes people think, well, because NICU obviously is a very tiny baby, mm -hmm. that the blankets should uh, go accordingly. But actually, the NICU ba blankets need to be about 30 by 30. Oh, okay. Because they go over the isolettes, mm -hmm. and they block, help to block out the sound and the lights mm -hmm. as the NICU baby is in the NICU. Oh, how interesting. And so and eventually the baby will get larger. Yeah. Um, so they start around 30 and 30 by 30, mm -hmm. 30 by 36, 36 by 36, um, 40 by 45, and all the way up to 45 by 72. Okay. So there is a range of, of sizes, mm -hmm. um, and that's approximate. Right. I mean, I don't have somebody come in and says, well, this one's like 31 by, 
is it okay? I mean, you know, it's it's kind of an, those are approximate sizes mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes we might get them and they're a little too small. A little too small. So we want right. them to be a little bit a little bit larger. Correct. And then once you do have a large number of blankets that you've collected, mm -hmm. um, either from a group or an individual, where are the blankets distributed? Every month we take blankets to St. Vincent, Hammett, and Mill Creek. We take them to maternity, the NICU, and to pediatrics. And then on a rotating basis, as we have blankets available, we'll take them to about five or six different agencies, mm -hmm. which could be um, maybe Office of Children Youth Services, Children Advocacy, Sarah Reed, uh, Women's Care Center, Mercy Center uh, for Women, uh, Safe Net, mm -hmm. Safe Start. I mean, there's about 25 or 30 other agencies but that we do on a rotating basis. Mm -hmm. uh, Bear Foundation. Um, That's a large group, actually, that need blankets from you. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, but we pick like five or six um, every month aside from the hospital. That is our primary, mm -hmm. but um, so that's what we do. And how are the groups chosen? Um, I would assume at your meetings, um, do, you, do you cycle through everybody or what if a new organization wants to be involved? As far as needing blankets? Uh, as far as receiving blankets. I have a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> Very organized. I, I have a spreadsheet, uh, like I said, aside from the hospitals, I really just kind of look at the spreadsheet and kind of say, okay, we went there and for the five or six and then the next month and just rotate it out. And do they tell you, you know, when, when they say we want to receive blankets, we have a need for them, do they tell you how many they need or do you just... It's just a matter of how many we have available. Available. Availability mm -hmm. is Correct. Key. So we yes. definitely, viewers, if you have knitting, crocheting, or cutting skills, we need you to make <laughs> blankets for this group. Sewing skills, yes. we need you to make, make blankets for the group. Yes. Um, and who... Who makes the, I really like the, the name that you give to your people who make blankets. I was gonna say, who makes the blankets, but what is that name? Blanketeers. Blanketeers. Yes. And what do they, um, Blanketeers could be anybody. It could be the individuals that you work with, or it could be a We group. have them from preschoolers who, like you say, who they may not be able to cut, but the blankets prepared, they can pull through. Mm -hmm. I've gone to preschools. And so it can be from preschools to that 90 year old grandma who can sit there and crochet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have wonderful blanketeers who are diligent at making blankets for us. It could be, well, you said as cheerleaders mm -hmm. who, uh, for a service project, we have Key Club who, who, do, who does them for us mm -hmm. or um, church groups or just women who enjoy making blankets. Mm -hmm. um, they, we have people who might make two or three a year or we have women who might do three or four or five a week for us. Mm -hmm. it, it just, it's a wide range of, of people who just enjoy making blankets. And like I said, how I got started, I, you can only make so many for your family, mm -hmm. but you still have a, a joy of making blankets. Right. And so they found Project Linus and they just continue making them. Yeah, and every year, um, and, and this is how actually we got to meet, every year the McDowell cheerleaders, um, I used to be uh, one of the coaches, um, through the AJO Pay It Forward mm -hmm. um, act of kindness, um, every year they get together and the varsity, JV, um, and freshman squads all go out and buy fabric. They make these blankets. We sit around for, you know, like I said, three hours in one night, mm -hmm. make all these blankets, and then, you know, we uh, take some great photos. It's it's a great squad bonding sure. activity as well. And then, you know, we, we pass the blankets along to you. But like you said, the Key Club, the McDowell Key Club does it as well. So this is a great um, service project project or yes. bonding project um, that any um, any school age group can do for you guys. Exactly. Right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Good, good. And um, what are other activities? I do want to talk about, uh, we just talked a little bit about um, where the quilt was, uh, where not made, but where, you know, the images were colored in, but what other activities do you attend throughout the community? Um, every other year we go to Our Lady of Peace. They have an art day and we do the entire school. They color the squares. 
Uh, we've done Grandparents Day at Our Lady of Christian. Uh, sometimes we just do a scout troop may want to, or a Sunday school mm -hmm. may want to do them. Um, and sometimes, you know, they, the little ones or preschools even, because they're, they can color and it's just, but when they see, they're just coloring a square and we always take a blank, a finished blanket with us so that they can see, they're coloring one square mm -hmm. and they know what it's going into. They realize that they might've just done this, that they can help. Mm -hmm because we call it their kids helping kids. Yeah, and it's nice that you bring a blanket with you so they can see the full project once it's been completed. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And you also have a special day coming up. It's usually the third Saturday in February. Correct. It's National Make a Blanket Day, and it actually started right after the Columbine uh, shootings mm -hmm. was the origin of National Make a Blanket Day was for the need of wanting to have comfort to that entire school. Mm -hmm. And so when that happened, then it was the origin of that. And so since then, we've had a National Make a Blanket Day and uh, all the quilt shops we have, uh, where either they make blankets, drop off blankets, and there's usually a, um, um, a drawing mm -hmm. and the, where someone gets a, a small prize for their blankets that have been dropped off that day. Yeah, and these are very comforting. I have to say I've been sitting here with this blanket in front of me the whole time <laughs> and I just keep just touching it, but it's like, it's so comforting to have it. You're right, I mean, it is, um, you know, something that little kids really do enjoy when they when they receive it. But, um, and we, you know, I know that um, uh, residents, if they're viewing this show, they can drop off supplies by yes. calling you. Maybe they don't want to make a blanket, but they want to mm -hmm. drop off fabric or anything else. Correct. Maybe new knitting needles. And you also take um, monetary donations online yes. that can go specifically back to our Erie chapter. Correct. Is that right? Yes. And again, go ahead one more time. What is the website that ProjectLinus.org. ProjectLinus.org. And, um, and we'll put your email and your phone number online so people can contact you yes. if they have any other questions. Um, Joanne, the mission of your organization is so heartfelt. I, I know our viewers are going to love the show. Oh, I know they're going to love making blankets. Um, and the stories you've shared from the real life experiences are just wonderful. So viewers, I encourage you to go to the Project Linus website, check it out, um, make some blankets for Joanne and this organization and for Make a Blanket Day. You won't regret it. Until next time, have a great day. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.